That morning of February 24 started for Constantine not with coffee, but with the incessant roar of helicopter engines. About 50 units of enemy equipment flew over the fisherman's head in the direction of the Ukrainian capital. Welcome to the Unique UA channel. Subscribe to hear the most interesting stories of real events. Since 2008, Kostiantin Golovko has been the owner of the fishing camp Zamiokolkas. Over the years, the place has become an important part of his life. Therefore, after sending his wife abroad at the beginning of the war, Constantine quickly came back. On the right bank of the Kiev Reservoir, where his camp was located, it was relatively calm, which could not be said about the left bank, where a column of enemy vehicles was already moving. There, Russian troops were occupying village after village, destroying everything behind them. At the same time, local fishermen called Constantine and told him that there was a pregnant woman in Strahalissa who was due to give birth in a week. The roads were already blocked on all sides, so pregnant Tatyana could only be taken out by water. This call inspired the man and his friends to organize the evacuation of people in their own boats. So they departed on their first flight. In the hope to escape, people started to come every day to the inconspicuous bay on the left bank of the reservoir. In the first days it was mostly women with children or patients who needed systematic treatment and now could not receive it. One day there was still ice on the water, but people had no time to wait for better weather. That day Tatyana also decided to save herself. At a speed of 76 km per hour, fighting with strong gusts of wind and splashes of icy water that were instantly turning into the icy crust on faces and clothes, people began to move to the right bank. The thought that the ice would break the boat, or that it would overturn, throwing people into icy water, was terrifying not only for a pregnant girl. In some places, the boat had to slow down or even stop to break the ice, and these minutes seemed to last forever. However, the confident actions of the fishermen reassured the passengers. Finally, the boat reached its destination and the people were transferred to Kiev. Tatyana gave birth to a son, her companions embraced their relatives, and the desperate fishermen set off again to those who were waiting for them on the left bank. So every day, under the risk of being caught and shot, brave men were transporting people to safety three times a day. About 2,000 lives were saved. All rescued people were delivered to Constantine's camp, and he fed them, gave them clothes, and sent them to Kiev by bus. At the same time, he helped to transfer humanitarian supplies to the occupied bank, medicines, food, and goods of primary necessity. Residents of four occupied villages depended on his assistance. This operation was very risky. Because in the neighboring village of Dimer, the occupiers tracked down and locked in the basement about 90 fishermen. Some occupiers shot the engines of fishermen boats so they wouldn't go anywhere. One day Constantine received a phone call from the military and was asked to help organize a dangerous special operation. It was clear to all fishermen, who were involved, that it would be a huge risk to their lives. But none of them refused to help in the struggle for the liberation of their homeland. Soon, hundreds of armed volunteers arrived at the fishing camp. They had to be delivered by boat to the enemy's rear to liberate captured villages. Eight boats with Ukrainian warriors set off to meet the enemy, not knowing what was waiting for them on the other bank. Fortunately, the operation was successful, the Ukrainian military hit the occupiers from the rear. This is the story of ordinary people who in the face of fear and danger didn't lose their humanity. They rescued people, helped the military, caught a lot of fish and gave it to occupied villages for free, and patrolled the streets at night. These fishermen became the great heroes of their homeland and lifesavers for many and many people.